Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to MT number six. We're going to build a TIE fighter. Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit kind of gravelly and deep today. don't know what the heck it is, to be honest. My voice has been getting gravellier by the second. You're going to be tuning into 3D Palace tutorials in a couple of years to be like, Hurr. only whales or bears or something will understand it. Anyway, enough rhetorical speaking. We're going to be getting on with doing some stuff today. Now, why have I chosen a uh, TIE Fighter? Because did I say X-Wing? It's TIE Fighter. Um, why do I choose a TIE Fighter? Because the shape's massively complicated. Um, it doesn't look it. It just looks like literally, you know, two flat bits bolted onto a non-flat bit. However, bear with me. This section, this thing, really is actually quite a lot more difficult to build than people think, simply because it has a lot of complicated shapes on it. So what we're going to be doing is um, scaffolding it out building the rough shapes and then from the rough shapes we can build the slightly easier to build shapes and just go on from there. Now I'm fairly lucky, I've been at the force.net, picked up a couple of nice references off them. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use 3ds Max 2011, it's got lots and lots of nice new polygon tools and I'm going to use those to build this. Now this is really an introduction as much as anything to using some of the tools that I quite like in um, 3ds Max 2011, because there's quite a few. For example, if I was to draw out this box here, I just press F4, right click, convert to an edible poly. Now if I just click here to show my full ribbon, this is the ribbon here, okay? We've got lots of tools up here that I quite like in the ribbon. So, here's Swift Loop. Now, Swift Loop is fantastic if, for example, I'm going to be using um, Subdivision. But it's also good for putting in details no, either way. So, Gnome Subdivision. Let's whack on a couple of iterations. And then if I use Swift Loop, you kind of see where and what I'm getting at, I think. At least I hope you do. It's a lovely quick way of making shapes like that. See? You can also work outside of subdivision, obviously. So, again. Just like so. And this is particularly good for, like I say, subdivision modeling. See? I know it's just a box, but seriously check those edges, you know, subdivision modelling. Never mind, we'll, we'll come across this a little bit later. Anyway, just kind of showing off the things I like. <coughs> Fundamental core of the TIE Fighter that we're going to make, which I think is probably... Is it an interceptor? I have no idea. Someone will tell me eventually. Yeah, it looks like an interceptor. Okay, um, we're going to start off with a sphere. So I'm going to pull it out in the top-down viewport first like so. And because I don't really need to worry about roughing out shapes yet, I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to drop my segments down to get me something manageable. Now then, eight segments is actually a kind of useful amount for what I need. However, I should probably drop down to 16, given a chance. Nonetheless, though, I'm going to start in low poly, so this is ideal, convert to edible poly. I'm going to rotate it, so I just hit E, that's my hotkey. A for angle snap, flipping it over 90 degrees. Let's turn off grid now, because I don't really need it that much. Okay, that seems ideal. Okay, next, over this side, so I may as well only do one side at a time. What I'm going to do is start extending out the side, which is the part basically that's going to um, turn into our wing. Well, our wing strut. Now, what we have here is just four selected polygons. Like I've said before, this is just kind of a scaffold run. I'm going to detach these and uh, just call them my scaffold, wing, mount. 
It's not really a wing, but you know. It's just a sticky out thing. However, we don't need to explain how things work, I believe, in the Star Wars universe that are supposed to work, nonetheless. Okay, next. Because we've done this, we now have the ability to kind of chop it up and do things to it, yeah? So if I go into my cut tools, and I've got a couple of choices for how I do this, you'll see that this starts to come in suddenly. Very, very useful indeed. I think I'll bring this one in a little bit more. Don't worry about the fact that I've got two close to each other. Because I'm deleting the ones I don't need anyway. If I wasn't though, then you'd be going back and uh, pressing the old control Z. It's all about me and doing this by eye. Now you may notice that when I detached it, I deleted the parts. You know, I probably detached it, I didn't copy it, I deleted these parts here. Uh, not especially concerned, to be quite honest, simply because I can attach symmetry from the other side. So we'll pretend that's a happy little accident. We get those in 3D now and again. Now then, I want to make some cuts from here to around about here. Now, if you have problems making cuts for whatever reason, there are various other methods we can use. I'm doing this in freehand. We will be able to tidy this up later, should we so decide. There we go. And again, just clean it up. I'm just pressing Control select There we go, and that gives us this shape here. Okay, that seems fine. Now what I'm going to do is just split this up a little bit. So again, this is just a job for quick slice. Or swift loop or whatever. I'm not even 100% sure now we're on loops. No, we're not, because we've lost a little bit of our loopy goodness. Let's look in here. Just do a quick Control a by Vertex. And a quick weld. 4, 11, after 10. That sounds right. Click, tick. Excuse me a moment. I've got a plaster on my finger. I'm just going to remove it. I was doing some washing up yesterday and stuck my hand in a washing up bowl with a knife in it. What a joy that was. Okay, so again, swift loop. Still doesn't want to work there, so we can just use a cut if we have to. Don't to take that and I'll just do a manual cut here. Obviously, don't do that if you're not kind of 100% confident of your cutting abilities. Okay, next. I'm going to start by selecting these. And what I want to do here on these ones is do an inset. Now, if I do an inset, it's going to inset into these ones as well, which is something that I really would try and avoid usually. Because I want to bring these ones up at a slightly smaller size than the other pieces. So, best thing to do is just extrude. I'm going to extrude by zero. Got to click the twig, t twig, tick twice, and just pull this out like so. Okay, now I'm going to start with narrowing these down a bit. Just use the scale tool, bring those in, just a little like that. Now these ones here, I'm going to bring these ones in as well, like so. Okay, that gives us this shape here. 
Now then, over here, where these pieces are, I want to change the shape of these somewhat. So, just select here and here, <coughs> and just do a loop, then a little chamfer. I'll just bring that in a little bit. That should do it. And just click tick. Now then I want to straighten out these edges over here. So what I'm going to do is grab this one and this one. Just do that. And then at the top and the bottom. No, not that one. Just like that, just to flatten them out, you know. Now I'm going to bring these two in. Like so. Just try and get them even as I can. Now this is me a chance to do some polygon lining up. Really straightening our piece up as much as we can here. While we still have the opportunity. The problem is it's all too easy just to make kind of a rectangular strut coming off to support our TIE fighter. But that's not how they look, if you know what I mean. Okay, now... I can bring this one up. And into place. Here and here. Get rid of these, just do a control backspace. And that gets rid of the verts as well. And look at the shape that I've created. Just to make sure it's not really badly messed up. Which it appears not to be, so that's obviously a benefit. Okay, next I'm going to grab these two polygons here. And these two here. And again, I'm going to do an extrude by zero. Just click tick. I'm going to bring those out to there, like so. Now you can see we've got these tries under here. Really, ideally, things would be easier if I could just sort these out. So what I'm going to do is just do a cut from here to here. And with that done, I can then grab here and here and just backspace them away. Get rid of that vert too. It's important just to do your tidying up now rather than later. Because these things will come back to kick you in the ass if you don't. Again, cut from here. Straight across to here. <coughs> so what we're doing is constantly checking our model, refining it, cleaning it. Now sure, we may not be working in low poly, however that's not the point. We really need our model to work efficiently. Okay, now Oops, wrong one. I'll just redo that. There. Now then this part here I'm going to tidy it up a little bit. We can't flatten it yet. Because if you flatten it like this, that's not the actual end shape we're going for. And if you notice, there's slightly more of an extrude, not extrude, a scaling needed at the top and bottom than there would be in the middle. So, 
Once you've done the scaffolding part of any mesh, however, things do become significantly easier. It's just a case of making sure your lines flow correctly. Okay, let's look at these middle ones. Just work by eye, you see? Like so. Okay, now then. What I'd like to do, ideally, is either swift loop that one and that one. Or I can even chamfer, though if I chamfer I'll lose this middle one. So I think, again, working by eye, I'm just going to swift loop there and there. And the good thing is that it obviously follows the form that we've already made. Now, if I grab these ones on the inside here, just bring them like that. We can start actually shaping this the way we wanted. Okay. Needs more of an angle, I think, on that part. So I'll just bring these ones forward a bit more. And of course, because I bought these forward, I've got to keep an eye on my scales just to make sure that they're the right width. There and here. Okay, and that gives us this shape here. Now, <coughs> pardon me. You've probably noticed that there's slightly more size at the top than there's on the bottom here. We can adjust those now. So one of the options is obviously just to bring this up. If I do, I'm going to have to rescale it a bit. Fortunately, it's not a complicated part to do. Let's bring it up like that. You'll notice that we're bending our mesh now. So we just repair it slowly. Okay, that's fine. It wasn't a particular challenge. Just going to make sure our shape's maintained. Now, let's look at this shape again. This part here is going to have to come up a bit more. So now I'm going to select this one. And I'm loath to go all the way down here and break this shape. If I do a chamfer, just to show you, it changes fundamentally this shape here. So I'd have to bring that in or it bisect the actual shape of the TIE Fighter's body. So another option would be to grab here and here, do a ring and then just do a connect and you can do a connect down there or you can do a connect up here using these tools like so now remember we've done a connect and because of that we need to just check the flow of our model so if we grab in here do a quick ring sorry loop just bring that in like so just so it's flat and I know this is an absolute nuisance way of doing things, however, it's a way that we need to do it, unfortunately. I think I bought it in accidentally on the wrong axis. There we go. Try that. Just zoom and make sure this edge here is straight. It seems to be going in a little bit too far. Let's just bring it back out again there we are okay and drop back out so now we can get this part here pull I'm end up with this shape like so. Now I know this has been a real kind of mess on way of ending up with this shape, however unfortunately sometimes you need to make more complicated shapes. And the, so the scaffold method of doing it tends to work quite quickly. Okay, now with that done 
what I can do is build the parts on top of this so ensuring that these are flat I then build the pylon mount which is just a cylinder using auto grid one height segment pull it out from here and then forward and that creates a kind of collar right now over here convert to edible polygon it's not attached to this yet so I'm going to go into bevel, I'm going to do this freehand if you're not comfortable with freehand beveling just practice, practice, practice building some shape I'm not putting any chamfer sides, chamfer edges or anything like that into it yet. I will, but I'm not doing it yet. And then that kind of attaches onto there. Let's bring this this way a little bit. Okay, that seems about right. I can adjust the size at once. I've finished adjusting this part. The most complicated part of the shape really is this because it should just be an attachment but it's got all these added little shapes for it, to it. I like to call them kind of added value shapes but you can call them pains in the arse if you really want. So I'm going to ring this, I mean loop this. Should have looped on both sides and it has. And I can chamfer it wide. like so now if I look at this shape and this shape I should be able to start deleting parts just a case of being careful really now I'm going to grab this edge and just shift and drag it to here just the point where it starts to come out from there really and then with that selected I can select this one this bridge and they put that nice piece there incidentally by now you're probably realizing if you're kind of the kind of guy who wears George Lucas pajamas and sleeps with a giant inflatable Wookiee that uh, this isn't the de facto best Star Wars TIE Fighter tutorial in the entire universe. That's because it's a fast set and it's not really showing how to make a TIE Fighter so much as how to do complicated modelling systems uh, using scaffolding. So, sorry. Unfortunately, however, that's the way it goes. Now, I'm going to go through here and here. I'd like to have more time to do a massively detailed TIE Fighter. I really would and connect. Now let's move my little caddy to over here and I'm going to add one, two, well three actually, four, and that should do it. I was just working that out in my head, thinking is that right? The answer to which is yes. And I can bridge never bridged before, you don't know what you're missing. This one won't bridge because it's technically just a triangle. So to get around that what we can do is grab here and here and we can do a connect but not connecting by five and then bridge that piece there. Just to show you, bridging doesn't work with triangles. See? We can also bridge this bit. Because it isn't a triangle. Cunning, isn't it? Let's 
It's quite cool, the new Camtasia has actually got like a time feature on it, so it tells you how long you've recorded. There's been so many times that I've been recording tutorials and I've gone like, I have no idea how long I've been recording for, literally. So this is a real boost and bonus for, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, down here. I'm going to want to extend these a little bit further, but I'm not too concerned just yet. First things first. So we're connecting there. And again on this side. Okay. Now then, looking at the shape that we've created, which is this one. I'm going to grab this and move this slightly out of the way. Because I want to bring these pieces here slightly more forward. Here and here. So I'm going to extrude them straight out like so. And then bring this piece straight in like so. See, it all works out in the end, one way or another, sort of. Now then, these things become clamps. So, bring that to there, and that to there. Just adjust the height, I want to keep things even. Yes, I can work in symmetry. No, I'm not working in symmetry. Okay, now let's look at these fellows here. What I want to do now is take these verts and move them to where I need them. These ones here. Turned off angle snap. just because I get slightly more control and again this is one of those fun jobs where you want to try and do things by eye a little bit if you can okay now then if you don't really know how to follow a nice straight line you can go into your helpers and just use a tape Now that'll give you a nice straight line to work with. See? Like that. Then all you need to do is drop down into this. And just make sure it all matches up. Cunning, eh? One of the many reasons I love all the little tools 3D Studio Max gives us. And the good thing is we don't have to worry about scaling inwards. Because, uh, there we are. Because it's flat on either side. See? And now it comes down like that, which is what we wanted. In fact, the only thing that I'm not too keen about is that we need to break this away from the top here. And we can do that in just a minute using cunning, clever means. Now then, for the bottom, remember what I said about we don't have any symmetry? Well, we can put symmetry on now if we want to. Might make our job a teeny weeny bit easier. So let's slap some symmetry onto this. Go down to our S for symmetry modifier panel. Click flip. 
because it is actually mirrored on the x-axis. Go in here and just click the little show end result on off toggle. Now I can go in here. Alright. So now what I want to do, take away this polygon here and maybe this one and this one. Why? You may be asking. Why, Chris? We don't understand. Well, there's a reason, don't worry. First, I'm going to just bridge this part. Don't worry, by the way, if the edge selection doesn't look the same. It's because it's in symmetry mode. So it's copying everything down here. Okay, next. I'll grab this one and just shift and drag it until we get an intersection, which is just there. I'm going to grab this and do a ring, and then I can do a connect, which I'm going to do here. And I'm going to slide this, just using the slide up and down tools until it's in the right place, and click tick. Delete that, and that. And then bridge here to here, here to here, here to here. Now then, down here we have this edge. Which I loop, control and delete using backspace. So we didn't really need it anymore. I only used it when I was bringing this part back. Okay, that's given us a much tidier, cleaner mesh, thank goodness. Things are starting to work out the way I want them. Now I'm going to flip this over just to make sure it still fits. Good, it does. Now there's a couple of little parts that kind of come out the side here that are clips and things that they're basically greebles just to hold the faux thing together, you know. Overall, though, I'm quite pleased with how this shape here has came together. Now, let's get rid of half of this. There we are. We can detail this one up a little bit more shortly. Let's come to the wing. Now, the wing is quite an interesting, complicated shape, so we'll start with a box. And you'll notice I'm using auto grid just to drag it out here like so. And the width, I'm just going by I for the width of the middle panel. So they're quite slight and delicate looking these TIE Fighters. I mean, they may be nippy and very manoeuvrable, simply because we're told they're very nippy and very manoeuvrable. However, that doesn't mean a thing. So I'm going to move that to there. Pardon me, I'm going to change my scaling on these a little bit, just increase the length. There we go because I'll need to be slightly more control mechanism in place. Convert to edible poly. Again, this becomes a wing. Like so. I was always surprised that these things didn't seem to rotate or anything. They were just attached. I found the whole design, the whole kind of design aspect of them quite interesting though. Right, so these go pretty much from here to Weebaloo back here, which is where the thrusters kind of come out and off. Now then, make a quick shape here and here, and I'm going to show you how to do corners where we're kind of bending in parts like this, because a lot of people bend them in and then go, ooh, that doesn't look right, and then rage quit 3D forever. So. There are ways to do it that are quite easy. And require mo a modicum of talent, but that's about it. Okay, let's try and get these angles correct first time. There, that looks about right. You have to bear in mind, you see, that when you're looking at these, if you think, mm, that's a bit large, that's a bit large. Um, chances are it isn't. What you're looking at, as much as anything, is there's inset panels in these, 
and I'll show you about those later on. There's quite a few of them. All right. Now, before I do much else, I'm going to go to my left viewport because I need to get the angle on these now. Let's bring them in as much as they need to be brought in, which is approximately that much. Because <coughs> it almost surrounds the inside of this. Pardon me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> there we go. I could really do with a glass of water. I've got a cold coffee, that's close. Okay, now we're going to change the shapes of these. Now, an easy, cheaty way would be just to use a quick slice. But I prefer to have slightly more control over my model. So, first things first. Let's grab this part here, just the verts, and scale them up. Okay, and we scale them up so that this angle here allows us to lead into this angle here. And you want this angle here to look correct. It's important. Next. I'm going to take these ones. Bring them up here. And again down here. And we're working by eye here. I haven't got something sitting as my reference image in the background on 3ds Max. Simply because that's going to slow down the way that I work and it's also going to cause a few other problems. Just for the workflow that I use. Okay, so you can see it's starting to take shape already. Now, here going to extrude them just a tiny bit this time, and I'm not extruding this bit. Then I'm going to bring them out to about here. Now, it looks quite clumpy and chunky at the moment. Don't worry about it, seriously. Okay, what we need to do now is just grab this end piece here, do a connect. Um, we're going to adjust the slide on this, so just till it's round about down here. Click tick. Do it again up here, and it's kept the measurements from before. Now we can just marquee drag and delete those. There's still a little bit of straightening up and still a little bit of repair left to go just to get our base scaffold working. However, that's not the point. Work it will. That's what we want. I think one of the things I always liked about the TIE Fighters was that they did look very, well, built for purpose, obviously, because that was the whole idea with Lucas. He was into built for purpose. However, um... Sinister, I suppose, yes, to a degree they did, they looked sinister. Right. Left viewport. And again, just... This time I'm going to drop in the, this one, and I want to... I can't adjust it on the inside here, I can only adjust it on the outside. And what I'm doing is just straightening these. I'm using the bad anti-aliasing that I get on my computer sometimes as a guide as well. Sort of thing that makes proper artists recoil in horror. Oh god, what are you doing? They'll shout. Well, I'm getting results. Are you? And then they'll hit me. Okay. Uh, starting to get somewhere, so... Again, what I'm going to do is slap some symmetry on this. Click flip if you don't see it. And we've already got symmetry on this one in the first place, but we can actually use four-way symmetry just by dumping two symmetry modifiers on it, rather than one. Always amazed when people don't realise you can do that. Just got to find the right axis. There we go. Now 
Now then this one here, again, I'm going to stick some symmetry on it. Depending on which axis I created it in, you see. And if I just click here just to open the gizmo, I can then drag it to where I need it. Which is there. And again for the wing. Let's find the correct axis. And just plop it into place like so. Once I get it in the right position anyway. There, yeah, that looks right. Okay then. We also have a piece that kind of comes through on the other side from these. So what I can do is grab this. Drop down to editable poly. Editable? Editable poly. My word. To get a stern telling off for the, from the Queen for talking like that. And then just drag it through until you get this shape here. Okay, and just clone it to an element. That way it's on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is just do a quick bevel. Okay, and that gives us that part there. Now at the front of this, I've currently got symmetry on for this, but I'm going to need to collapse it because it's just one piece. And what I want to do is just select these. Like so, and I'm going to do a connect and just increase the slide on this to round about there grab this one you notice you can't do a ring on these inside pieces so again another connect and as usual I'm kind of working by eye on this there we are, that goes there. Now on the back, where I presume we've got our twin ion engine, what I can do is grab these and just flatten them. And then bring them in a bit. Because obviously we need to keep the shape. And then doing that, I can then go straight into bevel. Okay, and that gives us the shape of the engine. Like so. Alright. Now a chance to look over my scaffold, see how I've done. Scales off a bit, not quite wide enough on these parts because they're too small. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is adjust them. Go to edible poly mode. Edible. Editable. Dear me. And let's grab these. Trying to get both sides, obviously. I'm going to scale them up a bit just on two axes, which are these two here. Now, this is a non uniform scale. We're moving into dangerous territory here. So, you be sure that this is reset on the X form and you're done with it. OK. 
Okay, I'm going to bring this out. Not too far about there. Go back in again. Grab these one more time. And again, scale them. That part there wasn't selected properly. Let's just fix that now. Before we move this part, hang on. This is all about the tweaking now that we've got this kind of working, you see. Have a look at this one. This is symmetry as well, remember. I want to bring this in a little bit more here. Bring these up. Just remember it's a case of keeping them straight. Like so. Check perspective that we haven't wrecked this piece. No, but it actually looks like we haven't. So that's good. Now to go to Ediable Polygon. As I seem to be calling it all sorts of exciting things at the moment. Bring that up to there. Which thickens that immensely. That's much better. Better? Better! Grief. I'm starting to worry myself now. Just checking this. Size and scale seem just about right, possibly a little bit thicker. This part here, depth seems. Okay, let's see how the width is. Teeny bit wider. About there. Move the wing into the correct position again. And in turn move this one into its correct position again. Okay, and that leaves us with, hopefully, our scaffolded out TIE Fighter. Let's have a look. Much better. Yes. Okay. Yep, I'm a lot happier with that than I was. Okay, so, with our scaffolded TIE Fighter, in the next segment what we're going to do is start looking at ways to bring some detail into our model, especially for the first part in the uh, cocktail. A cocktail? Jesus. Cockpit. Although a cocktail would be quite nice round about now. Um, we have the main cabin, which is just really class to do and then the ion engine at the back um, got some panelling details to do as well now we can do this using either sub D or just the lots of polys method and that kind of depends on what your workflow is I'm not gonna cover too much in the range of sub D but uh, I'll probably use the lots of polys so until the next part see you for now bye bye